All right, hello, welcome back to the podcast once again, everybody. PayPal and Patreon links are both down below if you want to support me. Only do so if you actually can. So, more unintelligent, uh, unadvisable decisions on the part of some governments. This time, our special guest star is the UK. The UK, or at least the government of the UK, has uh, already been doing some unwise things over recent history. Uh, gradually reducing their natural gas storage inventory capacity uh, to the point where now it's only down uh, between 30 and 40 billion cubic feet of storage. And I guess it was leading up to this, since the UK is banning natural gas. Yes, they are uh, doing the same thing California decided they were going to do, but doing it on a countrywide scale. While I don't know about uh, gas stoves or appliances, the UK is banning gas heating and gas boilers starting in 2025. Uh, no buildings or homes can be constructed with them. And I believe they did allow uh, for buildings or homes that currently use them to keep using them until 2040. Uh, but I'm not sure. This is obviously uh, part of their green transition efforts. Granted, gas heating is a really, really tiny, minuscule part of emissions. It's uh, kind of like uh, California tackling plastic pollution by banning plastic straws, despite the like infinitesimally small amount of uh, uh, plastic that's actually used to make straws out of all things. But regardless, uh, that's what the UK is doing, uh, which is overall, uh, like a number of other things, not a wise decision, as uh, they're switching, as they want everybody to switch over to electric heating just like electric transports and electric everything which regardless of the system regardless of what the one thing is in this case it's all electric everything this is really dumb because having everything especially uh, potentially uh, life-saving things like the ability to heat buildings having everything dependent upon one specific system or one source is really dangerous because that means in the event of failure everything collapses as opposed to just one set of things. The diversity of systems uh, tends to work out for the better. Uh, like for example uh, back when I was a kid uh, we lived in Massachusetts on Cape Cod and this one winter in the early 2000s uh, the power failed across the whole area, and it was in the middle of uh, severe cold and snowstorms. However, we didn't freeze to death, and it wasn't because of blankets, it was because our furnaces still worked. They were all gas furnaces, and the delivery system is primarily pressure driven. And even at the uh, varying like waypoint stations uh, that have pumps that sort of keep it going, uh, they have emergency generators obviously that come on to uh, help them keep going in the event of a power outage. And a similar situation applies to uh, my new home, which I'm currently stranded uh, thousands of miles away from because I lost my job and everything in the 2020 situation. So I'm currently stuck back living with family again, stranded away from home. So if anybody does donate through PayPal or Patreon or anything, just know that you're not donating to like my Ferrari fund or anything. Uh, you're donating to my can I please go home now fund. But my new home that I want to go back to uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, were heated by the waste steam from the coal-fired power plants. After the steam goes through the turbine, it then uh, flows through radiator heat pipes all throughout our buildings. So even across the handful of power outages that we experienced over the 2010s, nobody froze to death, even with it being negative 40 outside. Because despite the failure in the power plants of the electricity generation system, they were still able to just keep burning coal, and thus keep boiling water and keep generating steam. So we were still able to stay heated perfectly fine, even with the power off. However, such uh, beneficial arrangements go out the window when you force everything to be tied to a single source or a single system. And this gets even more precipitously dangerous when uh, that system is something as unreliable as wind and solar only. Because when thinking uh, emissions-free energy, that's all anybody thinks of, is wind and solar, despite the fact that those are the worst two possible options for quite a number of reasons, a uh, number of which you can find in a different video I did called The Green New Deal, The Math Doesn't Work, or something like that. I'll put a link to it. 
but especially in Europe, which despite Brexit, uh, the UK still follows the same mentality of. They are basically anti-hydrocarbons of any kind. A lot of them, particularly Germany, they are growing increasingly paranoid about nuclear, but everybody who wants to get rid of coal and gas uh, tends to want to get rid of nuclear as well. And despite its uh, wide availability in way more places than just fault lines, as long as you're willing to pay to drill deep enough, uh, no one really cares for geothermal either. All everyone wants is wind and solar. And the usual answer given uh, to the question about power gaps or uh, days without sun or wind is batteries. Grid scale batteries. Which are not going to work uh, because, like explained in the Green New Deal video, there is not enough of the critical materials to allow for them and the renewable energy generation systems and a global fleet of electric vehicles. You can't have all three, even really two of them. You can have like one and three quarters of them, maybe, if you're like willing to mine enough for it. But most green energy transition advocates aren't really in favor of mining either, so it's it's not really gonna go all that well. All right, that's it for this one. Uh, that's the path the UK is going down. Thank you everybody for sticking around and listening. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. As usual, there's dozens, hundreds of other things you can uh, watch or listen to on the channel if you want. You can support me through PayPal or Patreon only. Do so if you actually can, though. May God bless and protect you all, and I will see you all around next time.